I got scammed by this Mercedes AMG GT from a salvage auction with what appeared to be only front end damage and airbags. But in reality, when I picked it up, it was much, much worse. No! But that's the risk you take when it comes to buying salvage cars, it's always going to be a roll of the dice as to whether buying a car pays off or not. And unfortunately, this time with this Mercedes AMG GT, my chances are looking pretty slim. And that's because... In addition to the front end, it also has damaged A-pillars on both sides and damage to the glass panoramic roof, which I'm sure is gonna be expensive. On top of that, it also has a massive dent on the passenger side rear quarter. But I think the question that we're all wondering right now is how on earth did all this damage happen? And just when we thought it couldn't get any worse, we found this. The inner wing is absolutely crumpled and needs replacing. Meaning that this AMG GT is much worse than anyone would have predicted. But we're not gonna give up on this car here. We're gonna start stripping it back and start looking at how two numpties in a garage are gonna do a structural repair on a mid-engine Mercedes. Numpties? <laughs> You're the numpty. <laughs> I'm the one that bought it, I guess. <laughs> So in order for us to be able to access that inner wing to even look at changing it, we need to carry on with the strip downs. That means pulling off the rest of the damaged panels and parts which are going to get in the way. The first of which being this front slam panel piece which holds the bonnet latches and this is what took most of the hit in the accident I believe and this is exactly what shunted that inner wing. My life, I set my own salary, living a dream, the alternate reality. Cash rules, that's my everyday mentality. Guess that's why all these haters are mad at me. With that now out of the way, we can now start to undo all of the bolts for the crash bar on the front. And with that now removed, we can start breaking down the rad pack and the first piece of that is going to be the fan. And I'm praying that at least this part of the rad pack is going to be okay because it's all so expensive. And anything that could be broken still is broken. I was praying that the fan would have survived that, but although at the top it looks all right and it still seems to work all right. She's down. Yeah, at the bottom, she's broken. And I know for a fact it's not cheap because I've already looked and it's well over 600 quid and each one of the coolers is around that mark as well. So I could really do with finding a second hand rad pack rather than having to buy each of those pieces individually from Mercedes because it's going to get expensive. Right, so we've got the crash bar off and we're now actually at bits where things are okay. And I think we've actually got away pretty lucky with the crash bar because you can see even though it's ripped the seam sealer, there has been no more damage actually done to these. That's the first bit of luck we've actually had on this car. But we're still clueless as to how this all happened. We're trying to find out the story and we're sifting through all the bits that have been left in the interior and gonna see if we can track down the original owner. Hopefully they're okay with it anyway. Hi there, this is a bit of a, a, bit of a random call. Um, I've just bought a car uh, which has got your business card inside it. Um, and I'm trying to track down the original owner of the car. Ah, uh, right, yeah. No, I couldn't tell you from the top of my head um, who that person might be. So whilst we try and find out some more information about this car which I've already bought, there's a way which you can find more information about your car or a car that you're about to buy by tapping into the car's computer. No, it's all right. It's not a problem at all. It's not a problem. All right, my friend. I'll send that photo over, but you have a great day. Yes, so take for example on this BMW M2 competition that I'm sat in right now, we can take our OBD11 device, put it into the OBD2 port, then fire up the OBD11 app. Once we've done that, OBD11 is going to detect that this car is a BMW M2 and then start scanning all of the modules for fault codes. As you can see, we've got a few that need fixing on this car, but OBD11 can do so much more than that. There's so many features you can turn on for any VAG Group car and also BMWs from F Series to I Series to customize and make your car unique to your taste. So on this car, we're just gonna turn on the acoustic lock confirmation. So when we lock our car, we can audibly hear that it is locked and it's gonna be safe and secure. So to grab your OBD11 device and do basic diagnostics for any car fitted with an OBD2 port and full diagnostics for any VAG Group car, BMW from E-Series to I-Series and also Toyota and Lexus 2, use the link in the description with discount code SLICKS. Now, let's get back to it. Hello love, I'm um, just wondering if you could help me on, a, on something. I've currently bought a car from uh, an auction site that's been uh, crashed to, we found your, a parking permit to your place 
in the vehicle. So we didn't, we're just giving you a call, see if you could actually do a bit of digging to find out who it is. Um, I, I possibly could, but I don't know if I can disclose that anyway. And what car is it? It is a blue Mercedes AMG GT. If you do get hold of him, just it's in his best interest if he does get in contact with us because the valuables in there are quite expensive. Alright, okay. Um, Alright. I will see what I can do. Cheers, thank you. Okay, thanks. Bye. Bye. He's such a liar. Now I've got to give him something if he rings. you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon, you know what? She paused like it was someone important there. Currently stopped. Yeah, we have stopped. And because. that's because we can't get the wheels off. Because we've got locking wheel nuts. Oh yeah, but we can try and get that off him as well. That's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, so we need a locking wheel nut. To set the wheels off, to be able to get the wings off, to get the sides to get us off, blah, blah, blah. And we can't get them off at the moment. So we've either got to wait for Mercedes to come back to us, take them off by force with potentially damaging the wheels, or to hopefully get one off the original owner. Which one do you think is going to happen? <laughs> I think force. Yeah, okay, brilliant. <laughs> but luckily, Mercedes had one in stock that we could run and pick up and get cracking with the work. But it had been sat for that long that the wheels had seized to the hubs. Ah, my toe. But now with those out of the way, we can start stripping back the arch liner and then start exposing all of the bolts that we need to get to to be able to remove those front wings. Now the final two bolts were hidden in the door shut but it was super tricky to get to these with the door still in place because there's a robust cover which goes in the way so we thought for now we may as well just take the doors off. Now with that rubber cover removed there was two bolts behind here which were then the last two to come out and once those were removed we could take those front wings off. Right, we're pretty well stripped now. We've got everything off that we need to get to this bar here. And you can see where it's damaged here, but it has also took out these brackets here, which I didn't know didn't come with this or this. So I've got the main piece here and also the radiator bracket down there. But we'll come back to that in a minute. And we can see where this is supposed to go. Somewhere there. So to get this off, I need to go through some of these welds. I need to get through some seam sealer to get to some other welds. I need to take this bolt out here. And also I need to get through the welds which hold these on and try and straighten these out. If I can't straighten those little brackets, that means then waiting another five days from Germany. And you're not gonna believe this, they cost 120 pound each which is just ridiculous. And to be honest with you, with the cost of these other parts which I've had to buy, these structural bits, these are already totting up pretty fast. Because with those two bits you've just seen, the inner wing and the radiator support, along with the slam panel we removed earlier in the video, these total £2,200, including a discount from Mercedes, which is quite a lot. So to try and get this inner wing piece off, what I'm going to be doing is using this little finger sander to grind away at the welds and weaken them and then use a little chisel to tap away at them to try and crack them and then separate it from the car. Which did take a while for me to get this right, but I think once I found the right tools for the job, it wasn't too bad. But it's mad to think that not too long ago, doing a job like this would have petrified me. But ever since doing the X3M, even though I didn't change the chassis leg on that, it really boosted my confidence on working on cars. And after not too long, we were really making some progress and this inner wing piece was starting to get pretty loose. And after a little bit more grinding away and a bit more tapping, it finally came off. Well, I've got the old piece now removed and it was much, well, it wasn't as bad as what I thought it would be. Not a scary job as you'd imagine, but here is our problem. These brackets here, there's one here and one here which has stayed on there, but they need bending back. Now the annoying thing is they are aluminium so they probably will break if I try and bend them back but 
If I can save them, then it saves me six days and a couple hundred quid. By the way, if you are enjoying these videos and you're not subscribed, what are you playing at? Please do me a favor, I need your support. Go down there and hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a bunch and it's completely free. So to give me my best chance to make sure that these don't break, I've used a heat gun, which is the hottest thing I have, to try and get as much heat into them as possible, and then gently tap them with a rubber mallet to try and get them back into shape. Which surprisingly seemed to work actually pretty well. And now it's time to clean up the bits that we've just removed the inner wing from to get them ready to be re-welded to. So that means grinding away any old welds and making sure they're as clean as possible. And now I can loosely bolt up that new inner wing and I can see exactly where I need to remove the paint in order to be able to weld to it. Right, now I think everything is about ready to go. We can bolt that piece back in. I've prepped all of the areas where we're gonna need to weld. And I've done the same on the new piece just down there. So I think the last thing I wanna do before we do that is clean everything up because I'm pretty sure when it comes to aluminium welding, you want everything as clean as possible. So may as well just clean up this whole area before that goes on and before it gets painted, it's just gonna save me a job further down the line. And if you want to grab any detailing products to look after your car better, all of mine are from Clean Your Car, and I'm going to leave a link to them with a discount code in the description for you. So now this piece is more or less ready to go in, but we've still got to repair these lower radiator side bracket things. Because this one was super bent back and, well, it was completely the wrong shape, and it comes as one piece like this, so that means now all the radiators got to come out and then that whole structure's got to come out too. So we've got to get the rad pack out of the car in order to be able to change the rad support section, which sort of makes sense. But one thing that doesn't make sense to me is the way that this car is built to be able to support those rads because with BMWs like I've seen before, all of the rad supports would be in a bolt-on structure which bolts straight to the chassis leg, whereas this one is welded to the chassis leg. So if you do have any damage in a light bump, if you can't pull it back, that means you've got to replace this piece every single time, which seems like a super expensive and impractical way of doing it. But now we can do the same process which I did on the inner wing on that section too and start removing that from the car. And after a couple of hours of careful grinding and a little bit of tapping, that comes off. Ah, she's gone. <laughs> she's gone. Who oh. oh. knew that was a cool part? Get the back out. <laughs> And now we can start to offer up that new piece and make sure that it's gonna line up absolutely perfectly. Because if we get any of these bits wrong, it could impact the rest of the build and how the rest of the car lines up. But luckily, it's looking pretty good at the moment. So once we're happy with exactly where we got it, we can mark out again where we need to remove the paint in order to be able to weld it into place. Okay, this new piece is now just about ready to start going in, but we've got a little problem. Because I don't know about you, Ethan. Yes. But I can't weld. Can you? No. Can you weld Ali? Mm, Ali, 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 no. No, me neither. Good. So, what are we going to do about that? Do we know anyone? I know someone. Eden, 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 <laughs> Eden. Hey. So, luckily, Ethan's cousin Eden has come round. It's like a whole little family going on here, isn't oh, it? Yeah. It's nice. And he's going to weld this in. Eden, Eden. Eden. So very kindly, Eden had come round with all of his kit in order to weld this stuff back to the car, but it's not as easy as welding steel when it comes to welding alley. It's a much more skilled and time-consuming process. So after a quick practice and once he got a feel for it, he could then start tackling the parts on the car. It was so important that we get every single bit of this right because it needs to be as strong as before the car was even crashed. 
but slowly, bit by bit, Eden made his way through it and was absolutely smashing it. But this wasn't a quick process, as day slowly turned into night, we were still going. Doing our very best to make sure this was the best it possibly could be. But after hours of cutting, grinding, sanding, prepping and welding, we were just about there. There we go, new piece all welded in. Welds looking beautiful, I might add, OEM. Absolutely, in every way. Luckily this piece bolts in first and then is welded so it's quite easy to get right. This bit a little bit more tricky but we got it in, it's looking good. You might have noticed we swapped welders midway through. Brad's took over, big up Brad. And Ethan's cousin Eden from Roll Hard for getting this welded in. Without guys like this, we would not be able to do this because, well, I can't weld, but now we have it all sorted. And that is the inner wing now repaired and also these stupid welding cooler brackets. So it's definitely a good start. And although it may be ugly, I've put some seam sealer on to match the factory finish, which looks, well, it looks horrendous. But from factory, with a bit of paint over it, it looks just as bad. So I've had to aim to match that. Not necessarily the nicest finish, but it looks OEM. Now next job is to get it all painted. So once everything was prepped, I then went over it with a rattle can, which I got mixed by my local paint shop, which was colour matched to the car. And this is never going to be easy to get perfectly OEM because they're essentially painted with overspray from the factory. So it's a bit of a strange thing to try and do. Oh, and by the way, don't worry about the oil lines that I'm painting. They're damaged anyway, so they're going to get replaced. But like I said, they're not perfectly painted from the factory, but all I'm trying to do is make these not stand out like a sore thumb. So with all of those parts now painted, as I was finishing up the next day, putting the final fixings on, I got this phone call. Hello? Good afternoon, is that Chris? It is, yeah. Ah, oh, hi Chris. Um, the marina I wore my boat out have asked me to give you a call. Um, I believe you bought my old AMG GC GT. But I thought I'd give you a buzz and sort of give you the, the rundown. Of yeah, what sure. We had, we've got loads of questions about it. <laughs> Because uh, it, it, we only bought it maybe like uh, two weeks ago now, and yeah, we just got so many uh, massive question marks hanging over. That's why I've tried to get a hold of you, just because uh, there was a few personal belongings left in the car. So we thought we'd just try and uh, get in touch with you and see if we can get some of the questions answered. I hope it wasn't, uh, you know, too invasive to do that. Um, not too worried, not too worried, but far away. Um, I mean, the, the first question we got was just wondering how. You know how it was crashed, really, because it's um, the damage on it's quite strange. Like a lot of damage on like the windscreen, the roof, um, and what it seems to be like a lot of dust from bricks and things like that. Maybe some glass in there as well. Um, I don't know if you had any, you know could let us know how it was crashed for a start off. I went and picked up this bird from her house. Um, I've been seeing her a few times. I was on roads that I knew relatively well. We turned left off of this main road. It's gone down this narrow sort of country lane. Uh, I've never been down it before. Wasn't driving erratically, wasn't speeding at all. Um, and we just sort of came round this sort of shot right on this lane and it just sort of opened out to this junction, um, two lanes of sort of traffic. Fortunately, there were no cars on the road. I put my foot on the brake and the car has just slid oh, straight over no. the two lanes and has gone straight into this brick wall. We have stopped probably about a foot before hitting this tree. Oh, wow. Uh, Quite lucky then. We were incredibly lucky. Fortunately, like I said, no cars were travelling on the road that we've gone over. Okay, what I will do is I did take a photo that evening of the car when it was in 
the wall so you can see how close it was to hitting the oh, train. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> no, that'd be wicked, that'd be perfect. I'll be sure to send WhatsApp that over to yourself. Oh, that'd be perfect. No, I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Okay. What we're trying to do, we're, we've basically bought the car to try and fix it. Have you, have you still got the locking wheel up for the car by any chance? Or? I do not. I never touched it myself it would have only been the mercedes dealership that touched it so it would still be in the car right okay no worries i'll try hunting a bit harder for that then i guess one thing that i'm not sure when exactly it happened but from the the, the research that i've done it from what i can gather the car was crashed quite a long time ago wasn't it? because we've only just bought it but when was it that you you know when was it, it all happened so this is the other thing that i found quite quite interesting was because the crash actually happened back in 2022 right okay that's when, that's what i've fi figured yeah <laughs> yeah because normally i thought these things tend to go through relatively quickly i'm not going to go into too much detail sort of as to why it's taken so long but it was when the lady who worked for the marine um said to me oh i've got a chap um who's been trying to get a hold of you obviously we're going to mercedes about it being crashed and he's bought it I was very surprised it taken this length of time to, to find a new owner. Yeah, that's sort of what I thought, really. That's sort of what I thought. Um, but I, I suppose the other things, is the, if there's anything else you've got to do with the card, if you've got any paperwork or you know any old receipts or anything like that that you'd be able to pass over, possibly, just to help with you know the, the resale of the car or anything like that? I personally don't have anything. Right, okay. Else I do have something interesting, which I don't know if you knew about the car or its history at all. I, um, all I know is that it's blue and that it's crashed. <laughs> there we go. So it's not, I mean, you could do some more information to sort of go, out, go off of there, but the original owner of the car was a Mr. Roger Taylor, who was the drummer for Queen. <laughs> no way. He was. So, so yeah, did you get it off him personally then, or? It wasn't me personally. No, he was the first owner, and then I bought it through for the dealership he had on sale. Uh, okay, time. right. Oh, that's wicked. <laughs> uh, super cool. Well, uh, I really appreciate your help. I mean, if there's any other questions I've got, am I okay to drop you a message or anything like that? Is that okay? Of course, drop, drop me a message on WhatsApp. I'll be sure to send you that that photo over of it if it crashed. Oh yeah, that's um, lovely. Thank you. All, all, all the best with. <laughs> We're building it. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate that. You're, you're most welcome. <laughs> Cheers, mate. I'll speak to you in a bit. Have a good afternoon, Chris. Bye. Thank you. Well, that was eye-opening. I'm so glad the original owner got in touch because that really fills in some of the blanks about what happened to this car. But another thing that's been eye-opening, like I keep going on about, is the cost of these prices. And let me share with you some of the stuff that I've found. Because I think I'm going to need some help from you guys here. Because the next thing realistically we need to get this car back on the road is a Rad Pack. And I cannot find one for love nor money in the second hand market. And I simply cannot afford a new one at the moment. So if you know someone breaking one of these anywhere, please get in touch with me because I'm really struggling to find these parts. I don't mind where it is, even if it's in Europe, because we're going on the True Rally with Lee Lockwood and Jack McNeil to the Nürburgring. If you do want to join us, there's going to be a link in the description to be able to do so. But I don't mind travelling from there to go and pick something up. And then next is the interior. Because this car has a fairly individual interior spec being black and grey, meaning that the dashboard has black and grey on it. And from here, I've got a couple of options. Because there's two dashboards for sale. One is Alcantara and leather trimmed with yellow stitching, which I wouldn't hate the idea of, but it doesn't come with the other bits. So I'd have to get these retrimmed to match which is gonna be costly on its own. My second option is going for the other dashboard, which is black on black, meaning getting rid of the gray on the dashboard, which I don't think would look too strange, but let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. But for now, I really need to get on the parts hunt and find some of these bits for reasonable money. So if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and I'll catch you next time.